The latest AMD Ryzen desktop processors are here, and they promise better efficiency, higher clock speeds, and improved memory compatibility than what we saw released in March of 2017. Does AMD deliver on these promises, or is this more of a, eh, release? Let's dig into the data. Before I kick off my full review of the Ryzen 7 2700X and Ryzen 5 2600, I want to thank Computer Upgrade King, who came through in a big way, sending over not only both processors, but also an X470 motherboard to go along with them after AMD, well, let's just say they declined to sample me this time around. You can find a link down in the video description to the Computer Upgrade King website where they're featuring a bunch of new builds using second generation Ryzen, along with discount codes good for three or 5% off your entire purchase. So what exactly do I have here in front of me? Well, Ryzen second generation, remember this isn't Zen 2 just yet, is what amounts to an incremental improvement on the original release. In talking with AMD this year at CES, their focus this time around was on clock speed. And while I was told that they weren't necessarily disappointed in the, I guess, artificial four gigahertz ceiling for the first generation of product, they knew that this architecture was capable of more. In order to enable higher clock speeds, they moved from a 14 nanometer manufacturing process to 12 allowing the transistors to operate more efficiently. This has boosted max turbo frequencies for the entire line, usually somewhere in the area of 300 megahertz. Additionally, we see a significant improvement in cache latency for L1, L2, and L3, and subsequently improved system memory latency as well. Speaking of memory, this is the one area where Ryzen had a really rough start. The reviewer kits for the original Ryzen launch included memory that was, I guess, guaranteed to work at rated speeds, but the actual number of DIMMs on the market that could operate at anything higher than, say, 2400 megahertz was minimal. As the platform matured, we saw BIOS revisions that enabled higher speed memory configurations, and now second generation Ryzen actually lists official support for 2933 megahertz memory faster than Intel's Coffee Lake platform, which only officially supports up to 2666. In fact, in my testing, I was able to run my kit of Crucial Ballistics Elite at 3200 megahertz without a single issue. This kind of clears up one of the biggest pitfalls of the mainstream AMD processors. What I'll be testing today is both the flagship Ryzen 7 2700X, as well as the successor to the all-star Ryzen 5 1600, the 2600. I had the option of testing the 2600X, but seeing as how I like the 1600 so much, and the fact that basically every other reviewer was gonna be putting up numbers for the 2600X, I figured I'd give you guys something a little bit different. The 2700X is an eight core 16 thread processor running at a base frequency of 3.7 gigahertz and a turbo of 4.3. Because it runs 300 megahertz faster than last generation's 1800X, we see a bump in TDP from 95 to 105. It retails for $329 and comes with a new Wraith Prism cooler. The Ryzen 5 2600 is a six core part with simultaneous multi-threading as well, giving it a total of 12 threads. The base and boost frequencies are 3.4 and 3.9 gigahertz respectively, but because it has fewer cores, we see TDP coming in substantially lower at 65 watts. The 2600 goes for $199. The rest of the second generation Ryzen lineup is also available right now, as you can see on the chart. The test suite for this video is going to include both the Intel i7-8700K and the i5-8600K to compete with the Ryzen 5 1600 and the 2600, as well as the Ryzen 7 1800X and of course the 2700X. In order to keep things as fair as possible across the board, I tried to use as similar a motherboard as I could for all testing. The Intel chips were run in the Z370 Aorus Gaming 7. The first gen Ryzen chips use the Aorus AX370 Gaming 5, and the second generation Ryzen used the brand new X470 Aorus Gaming 7, all boards from Gigabyte. 
The Intel chips were cooled by the Be Quiet Pure Rock and the Ryzen chips all use the Wraith Max cooler. No overclocking testing was done for this video, but I'll be exploring how to overclock these chips and what kind of performance uplift you can expect at a later time. Our benchmarks were all run with a GTX 1080 Founders Edition at stock settings, as well as the previously mentioned 2x8 gig kit of Crucial Ballistics Elite DDR4 3200. First, let's take a look at power consumption. This is a total test bench power draw measured at the wall with a kilowatt. With higher core counts comes the need for more power, although we can see that generationally, we did improve slightly from the 1800X and 1600. The first test we'll look at, of course, is Cinebench. While Intel still reigns supreme in single core performance due to superior IPC, the second gen Ryzen chips see a noticeable bump over their first gen counterparts here. When we allow all the cores to be leveraged, the higher core counts on the Zen CPUs push them out way ahead of even the i7-8700K. The OpenGL test, however, once again sees Intel coming out on top, but a pattern begins to emerge with the higher clock 2600 and 2700X coming out way ahead of the 1600 and 1800X. We move on to RealBench, where the high core count AMD flagship is the clear winner. But although there is some generational difference here, it's not nearly as substantial as in Cinebench. Again, Ida64 CPU Queen gives us similar results, with the i5-8600K really lagging behind at the back of the pack, and the Ryzen 5 2600 almost catching the i7-8700K. Geekbench single and multi-core performance numbers tell the same story that we saw with Cinebench. Intel's relatively high clock speed and superior instructions per clock still crush the single core test, while when we turn on all cores, AMD jumps out way ahead. We also see about a 200 point improvement between generations here. As far as real-world productivity, Handbrake gives us an idea on how each CPU will perform in video editing and encoding. Surprisingly, the winner here was the 8700K, narrowly beating out the improved time from the 2700X. It was definitely good to see the significant improvement here, though, due to the increased clock speeds. Our Firestrike and TimeSpy CPU-only test allows the higher core count Ryzen chips to flex their muscles again. And although the margin of victory over the i7 isn't that great, we see that it did increase performance on the order of about 5%, going from Gen 1 to Gen 2 for both Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7. And then we get to our gaming results. And I think you're gonna notice a trend here. Intel still rules the roost when it comes to gaming, as not many titles are actually leveraging all 16 threads in a Ryzen processor just yet. However, we do see improvements in four out of six of our tests, with the other two falling within normal test variants. These tests were all run at 1080p to put the load on the CPU rather than the GPU, with the exception of Doom that I had to play at 1440p due to a 200 FPS cap that we were bumping into. I tried to spread out the test to include DX11, DX12, and Vulkan, and I think the test suite actually gives a fairly good representation of results across the board. So let's talk actual measurable improvements of Ryzen first generation versus Ryzen second generation. When we take all of this data that you guys just saw in all of those charts and average it out, we see that the Ryzen 5 2600 performs 6.3% better than the 1600 and the Ryzen 7 2700X performs on average 6.2% better than the 1800X. A nice, measurable difference, but not groundbreaking. The way I see it, this releases AMD's KB Lake. The performance differences that we're seeing are due almost entirely to clock speed improvements. Yes, there are some new features on the X470 motherboards, improved memory compatibility, AMD's XFR2, and better boxed coolers. But if you're looking for the KB Lake to Coffee Lake jump, what you'll find is more along the lines of the Sky Lake to KB Lake results instead. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a good product and one that I will happily recommend. It outperforms its Intel counterpart in every non-gaming task and it gets even closer in gaming than before, almost to the point where the differences are negligible unless you happen to be staring at a frame rate counter. 
Not to mention the fact that AMD has basically run away with the price to performance crown and their processors come with some totally decent coolers as well. If you're starting from zero, it absolutely makes sense to go with the newer chipset and brand new Ryzen processors. After all, they are objectively better. But if you already have a Ryzen 7 1700, for instance, it would make little sense to try to upgrade at this time. Sorry that this video was a little delayed. I hope the information contained within was worth it for you guys. Stay tuned to the channel for more videos featuring these Ryzen chips, including an overclocking guide coming pretty soon that I'm going to start working on right now. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.